Okay, uh, we only have two students here. Let's remind the rest of the students. We chat. I mean, in general, there will be uh, around 15 students attending the class. Uh, I think some of you might forget we have the class. Uh, so let's wait a little bit. Luckily, we, we have 48 lectures, uh, which is enough. And we will have some additional lectures. Because uh, you, you remember for course, course design, uh, I told you that this is a boring class, but uh, we can make it be part of computer graphics. Actually, it's part of game development. So let's wait for a few more students.
Okay, uh, since there are 30 students, we can continue the lecture. Uh, yes. Okay, so for the student who want to show me the homework, uh, we can do it a little bit later. Uh, I will just give you some time to join the Tencent meeting. Uh, let's first go through this, today's lecture. Because uh, I remember um, last time uh, we have some we have the lecture for for this code, but a lot of students were not here. Uh, maybe you forget we we need to attend the class for. Uh, I mean, on last Saturday uh, we we need to attend the class, but some of you might forget forget it. So. I will quickly go through this course and wait a little bit. So if you didn't make it, you can just do it here. Uh, first, we make some textures. So I will mark up some part. Yeah. If you see this bit of your second project, you see we have this texture coordinate. And we modify this variable. So for the student who didn't get attend the last lecture, uh, Write this texture coordinates because we told uh, you have been told the textures is just image together with the text coordinate. I mean, we we need to finish the texture today. At least this part. I mean, the coding part. And to read the texture, we need to change this to be eight and add one more line, two more lines here. Okay, so add some textures. I mean, if, if you didn't attend the class, you forget to attend the class on Saturday, write this bit, and change the eight, and also add this nine. Then we said, in order to use the texture, we need to do something for the fragment shader and the vertex shader. So here are the things in these two shaders. So if you attend the class, just see of this as a review, okay? We add one more par parameters as an input, which is text coordinate. We passing this text coordinate from here, I mean here to here. The only way we, we can pass this uh, the, the parameter in shader language is using out and A. Do remember, remember this is VAC2, VAC2, not VAC3. By using this, we can pass in the text coordinate, and we assign this our text coordinates with this passing variable with 
the the input test coordinates, so we can get it. So this is the sh two shaders. Okay, just give you some time to finish this two coder. This one is vertex sh shader, and this is a fragment shader. And this is input for location equals two. And this one is important. The output variable should be the same with the input variable. Only difference is this out and in. The type, the, the data, uh, data type is same, and the variable name is the same. And we sign this here. So when you finish, just check this is 12 lines, and this is, um, okay, I make it, uh, 10 lines of code. We finish this texture part first, then I can check the homework because uh, I said today is the last time you can show me the homework. Uh, then we can see how the texture works in Unreal Engine, in real world, in game grid development. Okay, so this is how what we will do later. So, uh, So can I go back here to the main code? So this is we this is the two lines of the code we uh, read the text coordinates because text coordinates are here and we use this to do it. Do you remember this is eight and this is six? If you do, didn't change the 8, you will draw something very weird, uh, strange. And later, those bits are about how to set the texture. We, we initialize the texture, uh, set the parameter for wrapping method, and the filters. Because those two things, we can see these two things in Unreal Engine later. Okay. And we read the image. We have one image in this place. But I will just give you like, I think five minutes to type all this line.
Okay, so I hope most of you should finish typing this. So we create a texture uh, because we are reading the image, right? Uh, but the image data inside of graphic card is just a chunk of data. We don't know the size uh, of the image. We don't know how wide and how uh, what's the height and wide of the picture. So we generate texture. We need we we need uh, we need to read it or take a record about the height and wide of the image. We generate texture and bind into this area. So GR texture two D. This area, uh, actually, is this area in the game engine is called the uh, the texture pool. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's texture streaming pool. This is called the streaming pool. Uh, the streaming pool is responsible for uh, store all the textures. So we we bind this texture to this area, and we set the writing method because we told. Uh, we have learned the the wrapping is used to handle the, the situation that uh, the texture coordinate is bigger than one, because we said the texture coordinate has a range range from zero to one. But if, if it is out of the range, what we'll do? So this is said. Okay, if it's out of the range, we repeat it, right? You see the slides before. So how we repeat it? So we have repeated mirror repeat. Uh, and clamp to edge and clamp to border. So it's here we repeat it. And we for the filter. Filter is handling things like how we decide which pixel we used for for rendering. We just use one pixel or a linear combination of the labeling for four pixels. Okay? So so we read the image. We use the soil library. Uh, we read this image, this image is here. We just add it. Uh, you might have different names, just a different uh, type of image. So just write your own way. And we take record about the width and height from the image when we read it. This is the channel. I mean, actually, we can forget how many channels the image have. Uh, or oh, you don't want it, so we put it there. This is soil load I GBA. This is the fourth channel. The force, I mean force is, mm, we, we ask the image to write with four channel, with RGBA. If the image has only one channel, like the gray image, we still write it a four channel. And then we use the GR text image 2D to buffer the image data to the this stream pool. Okay, we buffer the level zero. We will see what is level zero. Actually, level zero is mip map zero. GRGBA, wide height zero. And this is how we read handle the image. The image type should be unsigned char or unsigned but here. Okay, we generate a map map and free the image, then we unbind the texture. Okay, so uh, let's see how we create the image. So this is a folder. I mean, you should have these folders here. Uh, let me see. Okay. Yeah, this is a folder. Uh, this is the main CPP. For most of you, it might be the console application.cpp. And the shader.h file is also on this level. 
on this level, we have the rest. I mean, we, we have been told to create this dress folder. There's a shader folder here, uh, which used to store all the shaders. And then we create another one called images. Just put the image you want here. I mean, we, we know that if you want to use the MIP map, the best image should have some fixed size. Uh, the size is a power of two. I mean, so uh, like 1024 by 1024, this is a good image or texture because you can use a MIP map. Uh, but for me, I'm using a different one. This is to let you know uh, if you learn online, you will see some, some of the tutorials said, okay, it only uh, accepts the pictures which only have, uh, okay, I don't, let me, first let me see where the size is. Uh, it says it only re receive, can accept the image which the, the size is a power of two, cannot accept any other type of image, but here is exception. Actually, I can't find the, the, the information here, but I remember it's like, okay, yeah, that uh, is mission comments, moving for, yeah, this is my dimension, 1920 by 1200. I mean, so this is also acceptable, I mean, as, as an image, as a texture. The only thing that matters is it cannot generate MIF map. Although we write the generate MIF map here, but for this image, it cannot generate it. Okay. Okay, so we have this image. Uh, the the limiting convention is we write a name with capital T in front. Okay. So this is T image. We write it here. Read the image. Okay. Now let's use the texture. To use the texture, there are only few steps. After a few steps, we can use the texture. Oh. So first step, uh, we should activate the texture. And also, we have the texture coordinate, right? But the shaders, I mean, those two shaders, you see, the, we only have the texture coordinate here. We don't know what kind of texture we are using. So there's one way to let the shader know, okay, we are using this texture, uh, this texture is using uniform sampler 2D. Capture zero. This is to tag. This is uh, a way to find the texture because we know all the texture are in the uh, streaming pool, right? The texture streaming pool uh, or the place which marks with GR texture two D. But how we find it? Uh, maybe there's a lot of textures there, but which one we want? So in texture streaming pool, all the textures are marked with numbers. So uh, in general, uh, so not in general, but in most of the situations, I mean, the OpenGL and DirectX only accept 16 textures. So the texture streaming pool for one object, it can accept at most 16 textures okay so each of them are just marked with numbers i mean indexed with numbers so from 0 to 15. If we want to use it we just tell okay this is texture 0 uh, we use texture what i mean which number here then we it means okay we are using this texture so to use the texture the color equals we use a function called texture. Our text co-ops. 
Okay, this is the way we handle the texture. Okay, so we use the texture function, put the texture image, and use the text coordinate. Now, what we want is just just like what we did for the time, we want passing the parameter of textures. So, in order to do that, uh, we go back to main function. Uh, when we draw the image. Before we draw the image, we need to activate the texture. That's the key. So we activate the texture here. We can actually we can do it any place here. After the G, activate texture. Okay, so this is more like okay for the texture streaming pole. We open the texture zero channel. So this this is like the room zero. There are sixteen rooms here. We just open the the first room, which is ze room zero. Okay, and we we bind the texture. Binding the texture is more like okay. So it means for room zero, we have this texture. To the texture. Last time we set it. Now we just put it here. We bind it here and make it to be in texture room zero. Now the next step is the key. If you want to use it, you need to first find the place where we. Int G G R get uniform. Sorry, this is texture lo location. I Means the variable location, because we want to. This is more like this one, but we just write in separate way, so you know what's it really happening there. First, we find the location for the variable texture zero. So we find it on our shader, shader program, because this is a program now. We find the variables location, and then This is the way we're passing the texture to our uh, to our shaders. Now the texture image is in because the texture is contains this image, right? This texture contains this image, and uh, this is in texture two D area, and we activate texture zero. So for texture zero room. We put the textures here, so we put this image here, and the texture room zero. Now we know the texture room zero is occupied; it has some image, and then we text told our frame uh, fragment shader, okay, we want to use the texture. The texture is in texture room zero. Just find the room zero, and find your texture you want. 
So this is how it works. Okay. And there's some tutorial said we can ignore this texture zero because the uh, this is the function side effect. Okay. Uh, so this is uh, by default it is set to be zero. But I do recommend you to write zero. Then you know what you are doing. You know you are handling the texture zero. Write it here so you know what's happening. And next one, we can just delete the texture here. Because we have to use it. We delete it just like what we did before for some other VBO VAO. Then we can see how it looks if we draw it. Okay, so let's first run the code and see what's going on. Let's see if any. Okay, yeah, we can see it. Uh, there's one issue the image is upside down. This is because the OpenGL coordinate system is different from the soil coordinate system. For OpenGL, the orange point is here and so here the other point is here. So we need to flip the y direction. The way we do it, uh, there's a flip function here, but the best way to do it is here. This is red, red 2. This is the best way to do it. Okay, so let's have a break for a few minutes. And yeah, and then you can try to finish the code.
Okay, I will go back to the main part so you can see what is drawing here.
Okay, so let's go back to class. Now we have seen how to draw the texture, right? So this is how we draw it. Uh, the next thing, we will see how the texture actually works on for Unreal Engine. Uh, we will go through some slides first. And then I, I will check your homework. Uh, after that, if we still have time, we can open the Unreal Engine and show you how it works. Uh, if you don't have, we don't have time, we can see it um, next time. Okay. So, uh, okay, so how is that? I think it's called the material. Maybe it's capital. Okay, so it should be here. Let me open my slides page. Sorry, it's not page, it's kilos. Let's see how the material actually works for the engine. I mean, how the texture works in for the engine. Okay, uh, let me see if some... Okay. So textures. I mean, inside the, the game engine, texture should be compressed first. And it, we will talk about how it is compressed. Uh, what kind of data type it used, uh, the difference, and we will go look, have a quick look about the normal map and how they handle it, and also the size of the texture. So first, the textures are comprised on input for the game engine. Uh, we, we have told, um, we have known in previous lecture, there are types, different types of image format. Uh, in general, they are compressed or uncompressed, or like the raw image. <laughs> the, the game engine prefer the uh, uncompressed image, but you can still input the compressed image, but it will recompress again. So for the uncompressed image, uh, it's better it has a format like the PSD, uh, which is uh, created by the Photoshop, and also the TGA file, which is used a lot in game, and when the image is loaded, it will compress. Uh, compress with name, with data type like BC1 or DFTC1. Okay, so it's BC short for block compression, DFTC is short for directed X compression. And the number has some meaning. If it has alpha channel, it is five or oh, five here. If it don't have the uh, three or five here, if it don't have the alpha channel, it's one. Okay, and five and seven are used for some other type of data. And this compression can be disabled, uh, especially when you develop some some project which takes great care about the image quality. Uh, we can ignore this. Uh, compression. Okay, so next, when later read open the Unreal, Unreal Engine, you will see this is a general texture, how it looks like. There's some size, yeah, size here, dimension here, uh, has method is stream, so it is in stream pool. Once it is in stream pool, it has some MIP map. MIP map is also some Whereas here, yeah, MIP generation setting, the MIP map, uh, it have 12 MIP maps, MIPs, okay, uh, this one is zero, level zero, this is the original image, and has no alpha channel, this is how we compress setting here, and yeah, 
And this is tiling. See, tiling is wrapping method. Do you remember we have the wrapping method? We have wrap, repeat, mirror, repeat, clamp. It's all here. And we also have the filter. Let me see if the filter is seen. Can be seen here? Oh yeah, filter, right? So filter is uh, like the nearest bilinear or trilinear. We use linear in our code. So all the settings are here. Uh, this is place where the file is. Uh, as we told, the alpha channel is important. If we have the alpha channel, uh, it is BC3 or DXTC5. If it has no alpha channel, it's 1. An alpha channel never compressed. This is the same. So if we use an alpha channel, we can see this is more smooth and looks better. But without alpha channel, this area looks a little bit uh, strange. Have some uh, zigzag thing. Okay. The normal map. Uh, we usually store the normals in the Unreal Engine. Usually we just store for the normal, we have three directions, right? Uh, sorry, one direction, but three different components. But for real development, we just ignore one. Uh, we, we just ignore the blue one. We only use red and green because we know the blue one can be capital calculated. We can save a lot of space by just take one channel off. So this is the normal map which we stored in the game engine. Because there are limited memory and bandwidth for our graphic cards, uh, the texture resolution affects the final performance. Okay, so and this is decided by uh, the streaming pool. So we will see later on about how to use statics windows to show Okay, how the image, what are the textures and the size of textures, the dimension, how it handles that the right way. Okay, and then we will see something about stream, streaming pool, MIP map, how MIP map works, and texture group, and some merge map. Streaming pool is the way we handle the texture size because the memory we can allocate to texture is limited. Usually it's one gigabyte and the maximum is three gigabytes. We can allocate three gigabytes memory, graphic memory for the textures only. So if you have less than three gigabytes or your uh, texture image has size more than three gigabytes, what we will do is we were handling using MIP map. Okay. So by using MIP map uh, we can just ignore the level zero, I mean, ignore the original image, but just choose the one level up. So for one level up, the image is one fourth of the original size. And we will see it soon. Okay. We will also see all of this, we will see all these concepts in the game engine soon. But this is just the brief introduction about it. And the map, map map is like this. So this is original image or level zero. If we don't have enough, uh, in, enough memory space for the graphic cards, we will use this level. This is level one, two, three, four, and go on. So this is level zero is original image. This is just one fourth of the original image. Why we you need to use map? Because it's more accurate. The left part is with the MIP map. Okay, so we can see this texture. I mean, at very near, at very front, the texture is okay, it's almost the same. But if we keep going on, okay, very far away, you will see at this area, it's very noisy. A lot of noisy points, okay? But here, it's quite smooth because it uses MIP map. So this is more like a smooth area, but this area looks 
I mean, oh, might be okay around here, but this here we don't know what this is about. But if we look at this, we know oh, okay, this is a a plan, a land. Okay. So texture streaming pool, a uh, texture streaming is a way to handle in the the MIP map or which texture, which MIP we want to use. To use a MIP map, uh, the, the image or the texture image should have this size, 1x1, one 2x2, by 4x4, one, two by four, four by four, or this power of a 2, okay? So a combination is okay. So 16x2 is 4096 is okay, because they are all power of 2. If the texture is not of power of 2, you will never get a MIP map, but it's possible because for UI texture, for UI interface, user interface, we don't need a MIP map because this is only one map. We we don't need to store all these MIP map things. And uh, we can accept long power of two textures. So this is the key. I mean, you might read a lot of tutorials that okay, we sh the Power of two is a must for the texture. No, it's not. Okay. And yeah, we will see how the MIP map works and how we generate it. Oh uh, yeah. So shaders have a fundamental limit of 16 texture samples per material. That's what we said. Okay, we can have at the most 16 textures. So from texture zero, texture zero to texture fifteen, so only sixteen rooms. Okay, and because some of these texture samples are taken by the internal steps, like the uh, G buffer or some other uh, some other techniques, there are only like thirteen or fourteen, twelve or thirteen textures we can actually use. Okay. But uh, there's one way to break these rules. This is called the, the shared or wrapping texture. A wrapping texture is kind of um, combining or just merge a lot of texture together to be a big texture. And then we can use up to 128 textures. And this is only uh, supported by DirectX 11 and 12. So if you check your graphic cards, I mean, if you check a system, you said, okay, we support DirectX 11 or DirectX 12, yeah, then you can, you can use more than 16 textures. And yes, and when we do use using the texture, we can actually merge the textures. Why we need to merge it? Because if a texture image have an alpha channel, the texture will not be compressed. But that's a, that's very bad because if we if the texture can be compressed, we can save a lot of time. We can save a lot of space. Uh, for for general in general. If a texture image uh, has no alpha and which has a size about uh, 10 megabytes, we can compress and make it to be only one megabyte if it is possible. But with the alpha channel, we cannot compress it. So how we handle this thing? Uh, the best way, or maybe the practical way we handle it is we take all these alpha channels together and group a new image. For this image, we don't compress it. Then for this image, all the channels are alpha, but they belong to a different object. And we just left all these textures, which has which do not have alpha channel, we can compress them. So the whole texture size is, is reduced. It's a practical way to handle the textures. I mean, handle the alpha channel. So if the alpha, if two, for example, this is like three texture image, 
they all have the alpha channel. So in general, we cannot compress this three. Then in practical, we take all these three alpha out of the image. And so the original two, three textures can be compressed. I mean, we can take one example. It's like, okay, the original image is 10 megabytes. So for three image is 30 megabytes, okay? If we don't use these techniques. But now we're using these techniques. So original three image, they can be compressed. And each of them is less than one megabyte. So in total, less than three megabytes. With this alpha channel image, merged image, this is 10 megabytes. So after these techniques, uh, the overall memory we need is uh, around, it's less than 30 megabytes. It's much smaller than 30 megabytes. It's like uh, more than twice. I mean, you, you, you know this is a huge difference, these techniques can make these things reducing greatly. Okay, so ah, there's one more thing called the render target. Render target is a way to generate a texture at the wrong time. This is very useful. A lot of complex and beautiful effects, visual effects, made by render target. So for example, if you see uh, water, I mean water just inside of the pool or, uh, or some ocean waves or a boat just uh, a boat on the, on the ocean or some people who some slow trail, they're all made by render target. So render target is useful. So this is the practical way when we use handle this texture. Okay, let's see. Yes, uh, this is how you use the render target. Uh, so, but most day-to-day -day materials are just texture based. Okay, so texture is very important in real world development. Uh, we can also do some procedure texture generation. So this is just a, a balance between these two. So if you want the texture to use, uh, take less memory, you can generate procedure texture, but it means a lot of sh shader cost. Okay. By using texture-based material, uh, we save a lot of time. I mean, the shader is very simple. So the GPU, load is very low, but you need a lot of memory space to store the texture. So this is a trade-off. You need to make a balance between these two. Okay. Yeah, so this is basically the how the Unreal Engine looks the texture. Um, we will do it later. We will first. We need to check the homework. Uh, let me see how many times we have. We we have around twenty five minutes, I think. Uh, so we only we can only check the homework. I will create a ten cent meeting. So if you finish your homework, okay. Actually, we have two homework. If you finish that, you can show me your homework. Uh, uh, I will give you a grade. Uh, if not, you uh, you can just finish today's lectures because we we might not have enough time if I ch if I check all this. That's the meeting. Let's have a qu quick meeting. So when you join the meeting, you can just uh, show me how it. Okay, I will leave it in the WeChat group. So if you finish your homework, just... Uh, no, the second homework is not the color triangle. It's the changing color textures.
So actually, we have two homework now. One homework is、uh, sorry, actually three homework now. But、uh, the first one is finished. The second one is the changing color rectangle, and the third one is just the code、uh, for a pure red rectangle, but with the code I provide. So if you finish this, you can join in the ten cent meeting, and then we'll see how many of you have.、Uh, we have like four or five students finish this job, work on and、uh, check it last time. So we see if any, if I can see more students. Okay. So you can show me the homework using this.、Uh, yeah, this. Uh, attend the, this Tencent meeting. Click this、uh, link. Uh, there's ID. This is ID. You see these line numbers. This digit number is ID. And then just to share the screen is all here. This is sharing the screen. Let me see if I can make it to be English.、Uh, Okay, I cannot change the language here. Yeah, but if you want to, sh you want to show your homework, just join. Click that link. I mean, on your PC. Uh, it might ask you to join with some ID. 
The ID is 123-919-160. Input that to join it, and then you can show me your homework by clicking this. This is the sharing screen. This is Tencent meeting. I think most of you have a Tencent meeting. I think also Zoom. I think Zoom is also work for Tencent meeting. I mean, do not click this, uh, you don't need to click this, this is uh, open the camera. This is the share the screen, so the third icon, icons.
Okay, I think that we we won't see any more students showing my the homework. Uh, yeah, since some students just left. Uh, that's end for today's lecture. We will learn the characters next time on on Thursday. So please be here on time. Okay. <laughs>